Yo, what is up guys? It's me Zachly. We back on that grind, back on that quest to 200k and hashtag a million a year. We working way too hard for it not to happen. I don't know what I gotta do, what I'm gonna have to do, but I'm gonna do whatever it takes to reach this goal. Just a tip, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're one of the first people to join me on this quest. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're here when it happens because when it does, I already have something big planned out and you're gonna wanna be here for it, I'm just saying. Anyways, that being said, I do have to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the app that is a must have for NBA fans who enjoy or want to go see games live. They let you see the view from the seat before you purchase as well as rank the seats on a scale from 1 to 100 to make sure that you are getting the absolute best deal. Speaking of best deal, you can enter the promo code SDC to receive $20 off your first order to make it an even better deal. Download the app in the description box below. We all know that Nike became the official clothing partner of the NBA this summer. They're taking the reins from Adidas, which had some people excited and others not so much. And some people were just indifferent. Ever since the season started though, Nike has been coming under a lot of fire. They've been getting a lot of crap, not necessarily because the jerseys look bad, because some of them actually look pretty dope, but because of the quality of these jerseys with all of them ripping, having ripping jerseys almost every single game to start the season just wasn't a good look that being said I haven't seen too many jerseys be ripped in a while so maybe they got that under control but only time will tell but it's not only that a lot of people were disappointed that they didn't really do much for Christmas Adidas would always have these signature jerseys that the teams playing on Christmas would wear and that was just always something we look forward to to see what they will look like granted some of them look like trash anyway but Nike didn't do that at all this year so it was kind of disappointing but to anyone disappointed by that, hopefully this will make up for it. We already know that every team has what's called a statement jersey that they will wear a few times this year. Some of them look really good. But now they also have another limited edition jersey coming soon, City Jersey. And I gotta say that some of these are some of the best looking jerseys that I have ever seen. Look at the Indiana Pacers uniform. That could be a selling point for the team trying to bring in free agents. If you come and play for us, your name will be on the back of one of these fire jerseys. The Lakers his jersey looks pretty dope too, can't lie. Same with the Bucks. The Kings is amazing. The Sacramento Kings jersey looks really freaking good and the Warriors looks pretty good too. But then you have some of them like the Knicks. It's like, eh, I mean, eh, I don't, it, it might be an acquired taste, but right now, I'm not feeling it too much. And speaking of the Knicks, the Clippers city jersey looks like a Knicks jersey. Look, not even the Clippers want to look like the Clippers. And my favorite team, the Pistons, look, they don't look bad. It's not the best, but it's not bad. It's just acceptable, I guess is the word. Then you have the Cavs jersey, which reminds me of a Pacers jersey for some reason. I feel like the Jazz jersey should be a Heath jersey for pretty obvious reasons. Brooklyn is kind of dope. The Hornets, you can tell that MJ owns that team for sure. The Bulls are actually pretty clean. The Mavericks kind of look like one of the Hawks jerseys that they had with that bright green color in there. I'll leave a link to all of them down in the description box if you want to check them all out. Some of them look pretty dope. Some of them are, and then some of them, you know, no words can describe. You guys remember over the summer when everyone was freaking out over Kawhi Leonard? There were literally news articles dedicated to talking about Kawhi Leonard even though he didn't say a single word. He didn't do anything. All the man had to do was smile and people lost their mind. Why is Kawhi Leonard smiling? Why is he happy? Do you realize the power that this man has? All he has to do is smile and he will break the basketball section of the internet? That's a heck of a lot of power. Since then though, since his return to the basketball court a couple of weeks ago, people haven't been talking much about Kawhi Leonard. He missed the first 25 or so games of the season, but now that he's playing, still not much has been heard about Kawhi Leonard, which is cool. They're trying to make sure nothing goes wrong in his recovery, trying to ease him along. They don't really need him for the regular season, so this is the best approach to do it. But for us Kawhi Leonard fans, it sucks. Not being able to see your favorite player player actually play, not being able to see him set flames to the court like we know he can. He's out there playing right now, but you can tell that he's not 
really playing at the same time. Know what I mean? More than anything, it seems like he's just going through the motions, coasting along, trying to get rust off, trying to get back into game shape. What he's doing right now is like his training camp and preseason. I got some good news about that though, as yesterday, Kawhi Leonard saw a little bit of a jump. There is a little bit of glimmer for us Kawhi Leonard fans. He could be back to 100% soon. By the way, he even said that he's not at 100% after the game yesterday. I wouldn't say I'm 100% yet. We just able to play tonight and get a win, and I was able to make some shots. Kawhi Leonard was allowed to play in the fourth quarter, played a whopping 26 minutes, and the Spurs win over the Nets yesterday. Granted, in the fourth quarter, he only played for three minutes, but still, that is progress. And those 26 minutes is 10 more minutes than he's been allowed to play so far this season. 21 points on 8 of 17 shooting, like I said. He's still trying to get into a rhythm, still trying to get the rust off. We all know that Kawhi Leonard is capable of doing more than that. I'm sorry, but this got me excited, all right? We all know that when Kawhi was healthy last year, he was without a doubt a top five player in the NBA. Every single NBA fan knows that every single year Kawhi Leonard comes back better, adds something to his game. This has been proven. I've said it twice on this channel already that Kawhi Leonard said it himself this summer that he added something else to his game we just haven't been able to see it yet and most likely won't be able to see it until he gets back to 100%. Like I said, it's exciting because who knows how great Kawhi Leonard could be this year. I don't think anyone predicted LeBron James to be as great as he has been this year to be better than he was last year. And for a guy like Kawhi, who is still really freaking young, what, 26 years old, not turning 27 until June, until after the season, of course he's going to get better. Having almost 26 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists per game last year, no one could call crazy if you were to think he could average close to 30 per game this year if there was one play one single moment that could sum up the season that the Grizzlies are having so far it was the final play from last night's Suns versus Grizzlies game. Tyson Chandler slamming home the alley-oop with half a second left in the game to get the Suns the 99 to 97 win over Memphis and Devin Booker's return. Humiliating what a humiliating way to lose a game like for real. You got dunked on for a game winner. I'm sorry, Memphis fans, but if I was y'all and I saw that happen to my favorite team, to be honest, I don't even know what I would do. I think that would be the point. That would be my stabby point where if I hadn't realized it already, I would accept reality and realize that the Grizzlies need to start 100% over. Start fresh. It's time. Booker with 32 points, 6 assists and five rebounds in his return. Why? Things were going so great, so well, so smoothly. We were looking so freaking good. And now this, Reggie Jackson is going to be out for six to eight weeks because of a sprained angle. So most likely we won't be able to see him back until after the All-Star break. It's not a season ending injury, but it just seems like every time for the past few years that things are starting to look up for the Pistons, our starting point guard gets injured. Started when Brandon Jennings went down a couple of years ago, and out of that they traded for Reggie Jackson. He starts to gel, things start to look really good, then over the summer he hurts himself and doesn't come back the same way. He was still working himself back into shape to start the season, and now another setback it sucks this is starting to become a trend ish smith is a really good backup though so hopefully he can hold down the fort for the time being and i guess the good thing for the pistons fans is that the pistons won this game 107 to 83 Drummond with 21 points 18 rebounds harris was on fire 30 points 10 of 11 from the field and 7 of 8 from deep and reggie jackson at 8 points and 13 assists in his 20 minutes before he left the game and the pistons uh they'll be all right I hope. Don't even feel bad about this Milwaukee. This ain't the same Bulls team from earlier in the season. They're actually playing good now, so there isn't that much shame in losing to them. 115 to 106. Chris Dunn is still out here showing what he could have been if he was given more of an opportunity last year. 20 points, 12 assists, 4 steals, and 2 blocks from your point guard. We're talking about a two-way point guard here who can pretty much do it all except shoot from outside that's probably the weakest area of his game right now other than that though the dude can ball dang son the raptors just had the number one c2 if they would have won last night 
they would have been able to start getting a little separation from the Celtics and the Cavs. And I guess it just wasn't meant to be as they were playing the Dallas Mavericks. So you would think they would win this game heading into it. But even though he's been playing great all season long, games like this happen. DeMar DeRozan just couldn't get anything to drop. 3 of 16 from the field for only 8 points in Dallas gets the 98 to 93 win behind JJ Barea and his late game heroics. He had a driving layup with like 10 seconds left to seal the game for Dallas. He had 20 points on the night. Hassan Whiteside finally returned for the Heat. Not like they really needed him to beat the Magic anyways though. 107 to 89. Orlando has low key, actually pretty high key, been the worst team in the league ever since they realized they weren't supposed to be a good team early in the season. Nikola Jokic. I like the guy, but I'm not afraid to say it. I think he's been a little disappointing so far this season. Look, he hasn't been bad, and I wouldn't say the Nuggets are bad. They're just about as good as I expected them to be so far this season. They probably would have been even better had Paul Millsap not gotten hurt, but it's just that at the end of the season last year, Jokic was putting up DeMarcus Cousins type numbers, getting triple doubles without even trying. Now he has had a game or two like that so far this year, but he just hasn't been as consistent and that's the whole thing with this Nuggets team it seems consistency Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic both of those guys have to be more consistent they were still able to beat the Jazz last night though 107 to 83 Murray with 22 points and 8 rebounds and Jokic with 13 points 7 rebounds and 5 assists former Clipper Jared Dudley compared the Clippers to Titanic yesterday saying that they used to be great but now they're sinking and I don't know if that's a good comparison because the Titanic before it sank was a big deal it was supposed to be the best indestructible and that's why i wouldn't compare the clippers to the titanic because they were never the best and no one in their right mind would describe this team as indestructible all that aside though the clippers are starting to win games again they beat the kings yesterday 122 to 95 behind lou williams scoring 21 and montrez harrell adding 22 off the bench and on top of that doc rivers said that blake griffin could come back as early as friday which is weeks ahead of schedule so it seems that things might be starting to look up for the clippers Clippers, I guess, but at the end of the day, it's still the Clippers. That wraps up all the action from yesterday, though. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by clicking this little thing right here. Just remember, though, that only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday, you guys selected Russell Westbrook and his 31 points, 11 assists, and 6 rebounds as your player of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to smack that like button as well as subscribe to the channel to join the quest of 200k and hashtag a milli in a year as well as stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis. But until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets to my TC and I'm out of here. Peace.